Good evening again, everyone. Good evening. Very welcome to Shiloh Christian Fellowship this evening again. I just want to pray and ask for God's blessing on his word. Let's pray. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, tonight again we ask that it will be your word that triumphs. That it will be your word that we hear in this hall and those that are watching it on Facebook and on YouTube, that they will carry in their hearts, Lord God, after this service. That it will be your word that will be at work in each of our lives. Lord, let us not be offended in a way that makes us bitter toward you. Let us not be offended, Lord God, that make us not want to turn to your word. But when your word speaks to us, Lord, we can at times expect to be offended because it confronts us about our walk with God. It confronts us about our sinfulness. It confronts us about a day of judgment when we must all stand before God and give account. Father, thank you that it also tells us that for those who know and love Jesus, for those who have trusted in your beloved Son for salvation, that all our sins are forgiven and we have life forevermore. So let your word tonight, please, do its work in Jesus' name. In Matthew chapter 24 and verse 11, I was reading this a few weeks ago, Jesus said these words, many, please hear what he says, Jesus doesn't mince his words, Jesus said many false prophets will rise up and deceive many. He doesn't say some, he doesn't say a few. He says many. Now remember, Jesus is God in the flesh. And God can look down the corridors of time from when Jesus was on the earth, down the corridors of time to this very night as we sit here in Shadow Christian Fellowship and his words resound to tonight. And he says, many false prophets will rise up and deceive many. Well, nowadays you don't have to travel a great distance to find that there are a lot of TV type preachers with worldwide ministries and others who portray to the church and to the unbelieving world that they and the Lord are the best of buddies. Did you ever meet Christians like that? They really wind me up, yeah. no way. It's like they talk to the Lord as if the Lord talks to them on a daily basis. As if they have this running conversation with the Lord. And they have this insight into the will of God that nobody else seems to have. Them Christians irritate me. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe it's because I don't have it. I don't know. Maybe it's, but it seems that they, they regularly chat to Jesus together about absolutely everything from world events to words of encouragement for people who are daft enough to be fooled by them and to part with money for them. Vast numbers, Jesus said many, vast numbers of gullible people believe everything that these preachers say. And one method that these false prophets use is they tap into what people want to hear. Please listen to this tonight. This is one of the ways that a false prophet or a false teacher will work. They tap into what people want to hear or what people need. And then they preach sermons that tell them how these needs can be met. And it usually has an answer with it if you just put your credit card number in and give us X amount of dollars or pounds. And the problem is... Vast numbers of gullible people buy into it. So I am going to tell you tonight, and you'll not need to get any credit cards out, and you know Shiloh rarely takes up collections, so I am going to tell you tonight for absolutely free that I had a visitation from Jesus. If I was Homer Simpson, I would probably be better to tell you I had a visitation from Jesus. Okay? <laughs> And this is what he told me. Jesus told me that he respects other people's gods. 
And he respects their need to um, have worship icons that will, in, will invoke or help them to be able to worship. That he told me this is okay. He, can, he understands that people are like this, that human beings have a need to worship. And he understands that sometimes you know, we can get it wrong and we can have a wrong God. And in this visitation, he also told me, you know, it's okay. It's okay, I understand, when you say that you know there is a God, but you live as if he doesn't exist. Jesus told me that's okay. He understands it. He knows what people are like. And then he said to me, but I also understand, Tommy, I understand that, you know, human beings are all very, very busy people. They're all very busy, and there's no real need to make time for him. And he said, there's no need, you, you know, there's no real need for people to make time for me. It's not important, so long as they're getting on with their busy lives and doing what they can to help their families and to help others. He also said that there's, there's no one more important than you. Not me, he wasn't saying to me directly, no one more important to, ta to Tally Gordon. There's nobody more important than Tally Gordon. But he said, there is no one more important than you. So don't you feel compelled to respect other people? He also said, it's okay. Because I understand, I understand that men have needs. I understand that women have needs. And he said, it's okay if married men and married women have extramarital relationships. Because it's okay. He understands we live in sin-cursed bodies in a sin-cursed world. He says that he isn't interested in what sexuality or gender a person identifies as. I'm not interested. He says, I don't care about those silly, stupid things. He doesn't mind if people live with their boyfriends or their girlfriends or their partners. He doesn't mind because he understands that we have a need to have company. He knows that we've got diverse needs. And he understands that sometimes we've even maybe got a step out of the box. To make sure that our needs are met. And he can understand that sometimes that might mean that we maybe have to break the law. He knows how we feel. Well, what do you think about my encounter with Jesus? What do you think about what he said? I hope and pray to God that every one of you realise that I didn't have an encounter with the Lord Jesus Christ and nor did he tell me any of these things. But the list that I have just rhymed off that I, that I attributed to my encounter with Jesus, it is a list of things that people want to hear. It is what people want to hear. It is the things that they think that they need. And here's the sad thing. Many of the people who want to hear these things are in the church. Many of them go to church services. Many of them attend religious gatherings. Many of them have all the trappings of Christianity. And yet these are the things that they want to hear. These are the things that they believe they need. Well, as you know, we're doing quotes from famous people on Sunday evenings. And there's only really one more to go after this one. And the lay theologian and author, C.S. Lewis, the, the, the author of the Chronicles of Narnia, he said these words. A man who first tried to guess what the public wants and then preached that as Christianity because the public wants it would be a pretty mixture of a fool and a knave. I'll say it again. A man who first tried to guess what the public wants and then preach that as Christianity because the public wants it would be a pretty mixture of a fool and a knave. Fools lie because they don't know the truth. Knaves lie because they want to deceive. 
hear it again. I'm going to say it all in its full context now. A man who first tried to guess what the public wants and then preached that as Christianity. You can hear it. And then preached that as Christianity. So a minister, a pastor, a priest, a Christian who first tries to guess what the public wants and then preach that as Christianity because the public wants it would be a pretty mixture of a fool and a knave. Fools lie because they don't know the truth. Knaves lie because they want to must mislead. In other words, those who preach what people want to hear, giving them what they want rather than preaching the undiluted on polluted word of God. They are liars and they are deceivers. They are the false prophets that Jesus spoke about. Many false prophets. And remember, he's speaking right down the generations to this very night. And he's saying many false prophets, many people will come into the church, will listen to what it is you want to hear, listen to what it is that you need, and then they will preach that as Christianity so that you think your needs will be met. And he's saying they're fools because they don't know the truth. And they're knaves because they lie, they're lying because they want to mislead they are false prophets. Now listen to the list in a different context. People want their own gods. This is the reality. See half the daft things that are out there that say, I don't believe in God. They're a dafty because they're lying to themselves. They believe their own lies. They actually believe their own lie that tells them there is no God. And that lie that there is no God becomes their God. Do you understand? With a small g. People want their own gods rather than to worship the true God. They would rather exchange the truth, as Paul the Apostle says, they would rather exchange the truth of the true God to believe their own lies. And their lies then become their God. In fact, I'll go further and say this, that anyone who puts anything in their life in the place of God, that anything is their God. This is what the Bible says. This is the idolatry. Anything in your life that you are putting in the place of God is your God. People want to say they believe in God, but not do as he commands. And we see that more and more in this day and age. People want to fill the church and come and praise and worship the Lord, but they don't want to do what the Lord says. They want to say, yes, I believe in God, but I don't want to do what he asks. I want to live my life my way. I'm not going to do as God commands. People want to use their time for themselves and not waste it in church. How sad is that? People don't want to come to church. People out there think we are dafties because we have come here tonight to worship the God who gives us life. The very heartbeat that you receive is from God. It's not a big thing to say, can we give him an hour or a couple of hours a week of our time or seek to serve him? In our life, but people, people want to use their time for themselves and not waste it in the church. And let me tell you something: Shiloh is not beyond this because I have gone to people in Shiloh and said, "Could you do this?" Oh no, 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 I wouldn't have the time. <coughs> people want to use their time for themselves. Why? Because we are basically selfish, and we don't want to waste it in church. We certainly don't want to waste our time. To God. People want to be self-absorbed and they don't want to feel obliged to other people. They don't want to sacrificially give to other people. And I'm not talking about your money. I'm talking about your subs. I'm talking about your efforts. I'm talking about reaching out in love to people. People don't want to be doing it because they are so self-absorbed. They say, but no, people should be coming and doing that for me. They don't want to feel obliged to other people. 
People, please remember, I'm talking here to people in the church, people in the buildings, if you want. People want to sleep around and not uphold the marriage promises. People want to be in extramarital relationships and not be found out that sure God doesn't mind because God understands. And people want to sleep around and not uphold marriage vows or marriage promises that they made when they were originally married. People want deviant sexual relationships. They want to embrace all of this gender nonsense. This gender dysphoria. Oh, I don't know today. I think I will identify as a blue bin. <laughs> <laughs> Half of them would be better off identifying as a bin. You know, at least they get out these once a <laughs> But people want, they want sexual deviancy. They want all of these sexual relationships because they're not satisfied with what God has said is the right way. And they would rather exchange the truth of God for a lie. They would rather sleep with men or sleep with women or sleep with animals or whatever else because they don't find that a normal sexual relationship satisfies them. They would rather believe their own lies. They would rather believe their own God that allows them to do as they please. People want to live in sin. They don't want to be hindered by rules of engagement and marriage. No, 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 why would I need a marriage license? We're happy together. I know people who got married and as soon as they got married, their relationship ended. No, 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 we're happy. I would rather just live with my boyfriend or my girlfriend. People want what they want and nothing is going to prevent them or hinder them from having it, and if that means even breaking the law, they will do that. They will do that. Well, in Shiloh, we aim to preach the Word of God, not what people want to hear. And this is why you'll hear it all the time in Shiloh don't come here if you're easily offended. Mm -hmm. Don't come to Shiloh if you're of a nervous disposition. <laughs> We aim to preach the word of God, not what people want to hear and not giving you what you want. And you know what I've said many times, we don't give a toss if you're offended because we are not out intentionally to offend. Now a lot of the deviancies that, that I've spoken about, a lot of people who go down that road, a lot of the people with the gender issues and a lot of these people who are sleeping with their partners and everyone else, they could be offended tonight. But in reality, if they tell the truth, they're being offended by the truth. And we make no apology for the truth of God's word. We are not, I stress this, we are not about willfully offending people. I don't sit in my house through the week thinking, now what can I put in here that I can really piss people off? <laughs> <laughs> Maybe it was that word. Maybe it was that word. But just so you know, it's in the King James Version. <laughs> But we don't, we don't, I don't sit in my house preparing service saying, how can I put something in here to really wind them up? <laughs> I'll tell you why. We speak the truth not to intentionally offend people. It's because in Shiloh we believe it is a greater offence to offend God yeah. and to undermine the truth yeah. of his word. Yeah. It is a greater offence to offend God and to undermine the truth of his word. So tonight, briefly, and you'll have heard this before, let's briefly hear what God has to say on the matter. Let's hear what God wants from every one of us. Exodus chapter 20. God speaks. And God spoke all these words saying, I am the Lord your God who brought you out of the land of Egypt out of the house of bondage. You shall have no other gods before me. You shall not make for yourself a carved image, any likeness of anything that is in heaven above or that is in earth beneath or that is in the water under the earth. You shall not bow down to them nor serve them for I, the Lord your God, am a jealous God 
visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon the children to the third and fourth generation of those who hate me, but showing mercy to thousands, to those who love me and keep my commandments. You shall not take the name of the Lord your God in vain, for the Lord will not hold him guiltless who takes his name in vain. Remember the Sabbath to keep it holy. Six days you shall labor and do all your work, but the seventh day is the Sabbath of the Lord your God. In it you shall do no work, you nor your sons, nor your daughters, nor your male servants, nor your female servants, nor your cattle, nor your stranger who is, in, who is within your gates. For in six days the Lord made the heavens and the earth and all that is in them and rested the seventh day. Therefore the Lord blessed the Sabbath, the Sabbath day and hallowed it. Honour your father and your mother. This is the only of the Ten Commandments that gives you a blessing. Honour your father and your mother that your days may be long upon the land or upon the earth which the Lord your God is giving you. Honour your father and your mother that your days may be long upon the land which the Lord your God is giving you. You shall not murder. You shall not commit adultery. You shall not steal. You shall not bear false witness against your neighbor. You shall not covet your neighbor's house. You shall not covet your neighbor's wife, nor his male servant, nor his female servant, nor his ox, nor his donkey, nor anything else that is your neighbor's. This is what God wants. This is what he commands from every one of us. God's word is unchanged and it is unchanging. It is the same from the days of Jesus when he walked on the earth to this very night. It is unchanged and it is unchanging. This is what God wants. This is what he commands from every one of us. And you know what? He's put us all on a level playing field because God demands the same from every one of us. Jesus summarized these ten commandments into two. Love the Lord your God and love your fellow man. And here's some more truth from God's word which people don't want to hear. God's, sorry, and here's some more truth from God's word that people don't want to hear. There's none of us, not one of us, who has lived up to or is able to live up to the standard that God demands. So here is what it is in the commandments, you hear it. Here is what God says. This is what I demand. This is what I command from you. But his word also shows that not one of us can live up to that holy standard. I've said it before, I read somewhere years ago. If you look at the Ten Commandments as God's mirror, and you've got a piece of dirt on your face. When you look in a mirror, the mirror will tell you you've got dirt in your face. You can choose to turn your back on the mirror and let on it doesn't exist. You can choose to put a sheet over the mirror and cover it up. You can shout at the mirror and say, I'm a stupid mirror, what are you doing telling me I'm dirty? I don't believe you. Well, you can hit the mirror with a hammer and break it. But guess what? No matter what you do, your face is still dirty. And this is the thing about the Ten Commandments. God's Ten Commandments tells us we're all dirty. Yet it's absolutely powerless to clean us. It's telling us every one of us is filthy with sin. But the, the murder and the commandments are powerless to make us clean. But they will point us to Jesus. And in Jesus there is cleansing from all sin. God's Ten Commandments and Jesus' two commandments tell people something they don't want to hear while also highlighting our deepest, deepest need. They tell us that every one of us is a sinner who has failed to reach God's holy standard and therefore we are destined for judgment and hell while at the same time they tell us we need to be saved. We need to be cleansed. We need a saviour to save us. And this is my point tonight. 
people don't want to hear that God makes demands upon us. They don't want to hear that they are sinners who have broken God's laws. People don't want to know that they must stand one day before God for judgment. They don't want to hear of the consequences of sin, which is death and hell. And because they don't want to hear these truths, they will gather around them people who will tell them only what they want to hear. And these are the false prophets that Jesus warned about. And the church is rife with them. But a man who first tries to guess what the public wants and then preaches it as Christianity because the public wants it would be a pretty mixture of a fool and a knave. Fools lie because they don't know the truth. Knaves lie because they want to, to mislead. If you foolishly tonight trust in a false prophet, that is those people who tell you what you want to hear, you say, ah, that, that doesn't happen. It happens. There are people who have left shallow Christian fellowship because they couldn't handle the truth. There are people who have gone to other churches where the minister will not preach the gospel, will not preach conviction of sin, will not preach repentance, will not preach the need to be born again. And people will flock to those churches because their conscience isn't pricked. They're hearing, as I have said often, they're hearing lovely moralistic stories. But they're not hearing the gospel. If you foolishly trust in false prophets, those who tell you what you want to hear, then you'll not hear how God loves you and how he has provided a saviour for sinners. Jesus, the son of God, he came into this world and died to pay the debt for our sin, for our breaking of God's law, for our failure to meet God's holy standard. Jesus died to pay that debt in full for us. He died in our place. He died instead of us so that we could receive the forgiveness of sins and have everlasting life so that God could look upon us as righteous because Jesus took our sin. Jesus alone is the wonderful saviour of sinners. The Virgin Mary isn't going to save you. The Dalai Lama isn't going to save you. Muhammad isn't going to save you. No priest, no pastor, no minister is going to be able to save you. Only Jesus. Jesus who loves you and who died for you. Only Jesus can save you. Only Jesus is the wonderful saviour of sinners. And you know what's Here's the reality. For people here tonight, people watching it on Facebook and on YouTube, this may not be something that you want to hear, but I can assure you it is definitely something that you need to hear. Turn from your sin. Turn from living your life your way. Turn from your false gods and put your trust in Jesus and in Jesus alone. To save you. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, tonight we ask that your Holy Spirit would drive home to our hearts what it is that you want us to hear. That we, Lord God, would purpose in our hearts tonight before you to say, Lord, I will hear what it is that you're saying. And that, Lord, we will not run after those who will tell us what we want to hear. Lord, please. May you help shallow Christian fellowship to be a place that is true to your word. That we will preach it. That we will not compromise it or pollute it or dilute it. But we will proclaim it in its entirety. That people, Lord God, might be saved through faith in Jesus Christ, your son. Give us all tonight, Father, please, by the power of your Holy Spirit, 
<gasps> Give us ears to hear what it is that you're saying to us. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Amen.